The story of John Brown is a fascinating one. It's the story of a man who didn't see peaceful reformation as a solution. He did not believe that nonviolence could end slavery. Was he right? For how long will slavery continue to exist in the United States if we only rely on nonviolent, peaceful methods? Can we afford to wait and see? John Brown didn't believe we could afford to wait for nonviolence to put enough pressure on the ones who govern to pass strong abolitionist legislation. It had been tried for decades, yet thousands of black men, women, and children were still in chains. So he dedicated his life to a strong, active, and violent abolitionism, which many historians believe would spark the Civil War and eventually put an end to slavery. The reason why I'm bringing up John Brown is because first, I'm absolutely fascinated by the concept of political violence, which John Brown embodied through his life. Not only did he advocate and do political violence, he did it against one of the most violent systems to have ever existed, slavery. And I think Brown adds the necessary nuance to the discourse around the legitimacy of political violence, which is, of course, of incredible importance. The second reason I want to talk about this topic is because it was suggested by a patron of mine, Jackson Nichols, who asked me to look at art made on John Brown, and I stumbled upon an incredible series made by Jacob Lawrence. Let me show it to you. If you want to join Jackson in supporting this channel, please consider becoming a patron. For a dollar or more per month, you'll be mentioned in the credits at the end of each video. That's 25 cents per video or $12 per month. It helps out tremendously. Before showing you the series, let me quickly introduce you to Lawrence. Born in Atlantic City in 1917, Lawrence became popular at the young age of 23 for his 1941 Migration series, a collection of 60 works depicting the migration of black Southerners to the North. The Legend of John Brown, made the same year, is Lawrence's fifth history series. He had made one on Toussaint Louverture, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, and finally, the Migration series. I'll present to you the legend of John Brown by showing each image in order and reading their detailed description. John Brown, a man who had a fanatical belief that he was chosen by God to overthrow black slavery in America. For 40 years, John Brown reflected on the hopeless and miserable condition of the slaves. For 12 years, John Brown engaged in land speculations and wool merchandising, all this to make some money for his greater work, which was the abolishment of slavery. His adventures failing him, he accepted poverty. John Brown, while tending his flock in Ohio, first communicated with his sons and daughters his plans of attacking slavery by force. John Brown formed an organization among the colored people of the Adirondack Woods to resist the capture of any fugitive slave. To the people he found worthy of his trust, he communicated his plans. John Brown's first thought of the place where he would make his attack came to him while surveying land for Oberlin College in West Virginia. Kansas was now the skirmish ground of the Civil War. Those pro-slavery were murdered by those anti-slavery. John Brown took to guerrilla warfare. John Brown's victory at Blackjack drove those pro-slavery to new fury, and those who were anti-slavery to new efforts. John Brown, after long meditation, planned to fortify himself somewhere in the mountains of Virginia or Tennessee, 
and there make raids on the surrounding plantations, freeing slaves. John Brown collected money from sympathizers and friends to carry out his plans. John Brown made many trips to Canada, organizing for his assault on Harper's Ferry. In spite of a price on his head, John Brown in 1859 liberated 12 slaves from misery plantations. John Brown remained a full winter in Canada, drilling former slaves for his coming raid on Harper's Ferry. July 3rd, 1859, John Brown stocked an old barn with guns and ammunitions. He was ready to strike his first blow at slavery. Sunday, October 16th, 1859, John Brown with a company of 21 men, white and black, marched on Harper's Ferry. John Brown held Harper's Ferry for 12 hours. His defeat was a few hours off. After John Brown's capture, he was put to trial for his life in Charlestown, Virginia, now West Virginia. John Brown was found guilty of treason and murder in the first degree and was hanged in Charlestown, Virginia on December 2nd, 1859. There's an incredible power to these images, to the series as a whole, and I don't want to rob these of their power by breaking them down or analyzing them. Perhaps I can try to underline some aspects of the broader series that make it monumental, that show the genius of Lawrence. If you go to any Catholic church, you'll find the Stations of the Cross depicting different scenes from the crucifixion of Jesus. This is used not only to remember and worship the crucifixion, but also to convey the story in a simple narration which could be understood by all. There's power in simplicity. There's something moving about a simplified story of a powerful being. Finally, this story begins and ends in an extremely striking way. It starts with an image of the crucifixion, the cross being a recurrent motive in the series. However, we don't know which man is John Brown. He could be at the base of the cross or the man on the cross himself. This starts the story not only by conveying the importance of this figure, but also by erecting him as both a martyr and a figure of controversy. Then skip to the end of the story where John Brown is hung. There's no doubt about who he is. This is John Brown, a rope to his neck, floating in the sky, in a position similar to the one Christ was put in. This last picture is important to the whole conversation about violence we started at the beginning of the video. Jacob Lawrence doesn't really make any moral judgments in the depiction of his subjects. He's not explicitly saying that what John Brown did was good, though creating a series titled The Legend of John Brown is a pretty clear indication of what he thought of him. And though there wouldn't be any other way of ending the series, this image reminds us that John Brown didn't start, nor did he end, the violence. Slavery was extremely violent in its very nature. Brown exerted violence to put an end to a greater violence, similar to how self-defense is the kind of violence which limits a greater violence. However, his actions didn't put an end to violence. The institutions, the state, the law, and the people enforcing it also committed violence in response to his violent actions. You see the consequences of that violence here, floating in the sky, a rope to its neck. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you Axel, Mike Wex, Roman Brandel, X Towns, and all my other patrons for supporting the channel. If you also want to help out, leave a like, subscribe, and check out patreon.com forward slash the canvas. Thank you.
And also, if you're still here, check out the Discord. Link is probably in the comments or at least in the description. And check out twitch.tv forward slash germinal. That's where I, I stream now. Having a lot of fun there. So yeah, go ahead, join us. We have a lot of fun.